Dr. Sean. The group is beginning to assemble. They have already been prepared with the use of proper study materials for the film which is to be shown. The projector is in place. The screen and the speaker are set up. The amplifier is properly set up and the cord connected to the projector. The power cord is properly connected both to the projector and to the outlet. The light control curtains are ready to be drawn. An assistant is at the light switch. It is time to start. The projectionist gives the signal and the curtains are closed. The assistant turns out the light and the show has begun. Everything properly prepared in advance ensures a good film showing. Good film shows are set up in advance so that there is time to remedy any faults that would otherwise mar the show. In this room, a film will be shown shortly. The projectionist arrives early so that he will have time to set up his equipment and check the light control facilities, the ventilation, the power source, his own equipment, and the films to be shown. He has already made sure that the power supply is the right kind, alternating or direct current, and that it is the right voltage for the projector. The screen is set up in the front of the room. It is placed so that everyone can easily see it. The bottom of the screen should be level with the tops of the heads of those in the front row. The projector is on a stand. The stand is directly in front of the screen so that there will be no sidewise distortion of the projected image. The projector arms are put in place. The take-up belt is checked. The power cord plugged into the projector is twisted for safety around the projector stand to prevent the projector from being tipped over if the cord is pulled. When an extension cord is needed, the projectionist twists the cords round one another before plugging them together, so that if the cords are pulled or jerked, they will not come apart. After the cord is wrapped around a chair leg, it is plugged into a wall outlet, and the excess cord is coiled up neatly against the wall. The projector is turned on for a trial run. First the motor, then the lamp. The image is too large for the screen because the projector is too far away. The average 30-foot classroom, an image of about three and one-half feet wide is best. With the standard lens, this will result when the projector is about 20 feet from the screen. If the projector is closer to the screen, the image will be smaller and too bright. If the projector is farther away from the screen, the image will be larger and too dim. Therefore, if the image is too large, the projector must be moved closer to the screen. The image is now the right size and brilliance, but there is fuzz around its edge. 
This is dirt in the aperture of the projector, which must be carefully cleaned before the showing, for the dirt is not only disturbing to see, but it will scratch the film. After the visual projection has been checked, the sound is connected so that it too can be inspected. Some speakers have their own power supply and the cord must be plugged into a wall outlet. The speaker cord is also anchored to the leg of the table. It is anchored again to the leg of the projector stand before it is connected to the projector. Now the amplifier is turned on. In a few moments it will have warmed up and when the volume control is turned up full, a loud hiss will surge to indicate that the sound system is working. Remember that there will be less volume and less high frequency response in a room filled with audience than in an empty room so that the volume and the tone should be set somewhat higher in the preparatory projection. The films are placed in the order of their projection. The can should be opened and left open, so that changes of reels can be made quickly without interruptions while a sticky lid is painfully removed. To determine whether the film is ready for threading, lift the film off the reel over the top, making sure that it doesn't get on the floor where it will pick up dirt and scratches. Holding the end of the film straight up in the air, if the picture or letters are right side up, and in the correct left to right position, the film is ready for threading. When the show begins, you won't have this, or this. The picture will be right side up and in the proper position. All the reels that are to be projected should be inspected in this manner. When this has been done, the first film on the program should be threaded in the projector. After threading, the motor is turned on, then the lamp. The image is focused and brought into proper frame. Remember that on sound projectors, the sprocket wheels have sprockets only on one side because sound films have sprocket holes only on one side. The sound runs down the other. Most silent projectors have sprockets on both sides of the sprocket wheel. Thus, silent films can be run on a sound projector, but sound films must never be run on a silent machine. To reduce the strain on the film during projection, the film is threaded with loops above and below the gate. If the loops are too short, they will tear the film. If they are too large, they will slap about. The correct size is indicated on the projector itself. Check to see if there is a spare projection lamp, a spare exciter lamp for the sound system, and a spare fuse for the amplifier. Make sure that the amplifier and the power cords are in the best positions. Check the light control facilities. Draw curtains, when properly installed, provide the most effective light control medium. The curtain should be hung in such a way that the hangers run along a track. The rod and ring method will not stand up to long wear. The track should be fixed to the ceiling, far enough away from the wall so that the curtain will avoid obstructions, such as window boxes, bookshelves, radiators, or windows that open inwards like this. The bottom of the curtain should be about 18 inches from the floor. This will control the light, but permit ventilation. Here the curtains operate smoothly and darken effectively. The track for one curtain curves around the end of the other. Thus, there is an overlap and no gap is present to permit the entry of light. Everything has now been checked, the light control facilities, the film, the projector, and the amplifier. The projection is derived early enough to make sure that all would be working well. Now that the group is coming in, he has assured himself that the show will be good. There will be no faults or interruptions to mar it, and attention to the film and the enjoyment of it will be undisturbed.
When the show is over, the room lights are turned on while the end title is still on the screen. The projector lamp is then turned off. As soon as the sound on the film is finished, the amplifier is turned off. If at all possible, dismantling or removal should not take place until after the audience is dispersed. Careful preparation produces successful showing.